Pipe Network presents. On this episode of season four, let's talk. Uh, I had to work at I had to work at a young age, so I had to take a lot of responsibility at a very young age. Had to really take in fucking adulting at a young age, and I guess that's how. I might be able to share a lot in terms of your branding when it comes to philosophy and all that stuff. In fact, hey folks, welcome back to the Rajiv Show, and I'm your host Rajiv Doreswami. And this show aims to help reach out to those who are currently struggling in life. And to remind you that life is indeed beautiful when you're inspired to make it your own. Before we get into this episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to whichever platform you are using. And if you want to connect with me, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on TikTok at the Rajiv Show. Hey folks, welcome back to the Rajiv Show. Another, another, another new episode, and uh, this time uh, I jived with this guest uh, before this recording, and um, I don't know much to say because I only met the guy <laughs> this very day. We this is our very first conversation, so I'm least expecting the unexpected here. For for those who don't know, my guest today is Alex Pedron. Hey pal, how you doing? Wait, did I pronounce it right? <laughs> I'm good. Yes. What's up, Raji Doraiswami? Did I correct? <laughs> I tried to say it very hip hop style, but that's how I really just do it. You know, yeah. um, I really appreciate you inviting me over to your podcast. Let's talk series. I'm ready to have an interesting conversation with you once again, Alex Pedrone. Thank you very, very much. Let's do this. Awesome. Awesome. Before we get into the meat and bones of our conversation, of course, uh, aside from the introduction that I gave, which was kind of a little bit less, <laughs> less, uh, less informa- in- informative, mm-hmm. could you give a little bit of background to my uh, to my listeners before we get into the entire conversation? Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? I'll give a little bit of a personal and professional background. So personally, uh. Uh, I eat orange juice powder, personally. Sometimes I sleep like I'm in a coffin with my hands just under my butt. And also, I talk to myself a lot in my head, especially when I'm riding my motorcycle. So you know when I got my helmet on and all that, I talk to myself a lot during that time. Professionally, I'm a maverick entrepreneur. What do I mean by a maverick? I mean that I am someone who has a healthy dissatisfaction. With the status quo, I'm a rebel in the entrepreneurial arena. Not only that, I am a motivator and keynote speaker as well. Also, the better half of Stories After Swipe Right podcast. Please do not tell my fiance I said that. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> <laughs> I hope she doesn't tune in. That's the only part <laughs> we're worried about. <laughs> oh, it's all good. I'll tell her to skip this part. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Um, before uh, I want to take a time travel. I want to time travel back into time, and let's take a time travel. I don't have those sound effects mm-hmm. stuff anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, if you and I were high school in uh, in in uh, if you guys if you and I were high school in uh, high school, I mean classmates in high school, lost for words there. Uh-huh. Uh, who were you in high school? Are you the guy with the chicks? Are you the guy with the books? Are you the sporty type? Uh, where would you fit yourself in the criteria of a high school, you know, settings, setting? Um, to to be completely transparent with you, Raji, none of the above, man, because I dropped out of high school. Ooh. <laughs> I dropped out of high school, man. Okay, so there's there's really nothing much to share except where I was at all the way to my junior year, mm. which was super cool. But you know, if, if we were classmates and we were hanging out and such, 
he would probably remember me as the dude that dropped out or like the whatever the fuck happened to that guy that's how you probably <laughs> remember me man yeah. <laughs> so you know i live a colorful life after high school uh, i had to work at i had to work at a young age mm. so i had to take a lot of responsibility at a very young age had to really take in fucking adulting at a young age and i guess that's how i might be able to share a lot in terms of your branding when it comes to philosophy and all that stuff in fact what i'm even more curious about raji while we're on this podcast is i can see your photo right now and you've got this you got this quirky looking <laughs> photo it's black and white and <laughs> it shows that your hand is folded your hair's pretty messy you're <laughs> smiling in a pretty awkward way it's kind of creeping me out <laughs> Tell me what's going on in this photo, man. I That's love what I, know. <laughs> I love that segue there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little bit of uh, philosophy uh, behind that story. Um, one is uh, the fir- the folk that I the folk that I interviewed here has had an, uh, I I think I shared his, his story. But from my mm-hmm. perspective of this was when I was um, going through the samples of the photography that. Um, the photographer, my, my friend Ian Viernes, shout out to him if he's tuning in. Uh, uh, Ian. <laughs> yeah, uh, he he gave me the samples, and then I was looking for something that represented me. And then a um, mm-hmm. few years, you know, into the into the new profile picture, I kind of said, okay, that looks like it's going to be something that I'd use till the day I die, because you know you you know the whole social <laughs> media thing, you know, everybody changes. Every two yeah. years, not even two years, like every two minutes, they change one profile. The picture. profile pictures. Yeah. Yeah. And they're never consistent. And I said, if I were to settle down with something that would signify my brand, I think that I'd go with this probably till the day I die, or probably till I pass on my legacy. And uh, the the philosophy, the philosophy behind the story, uh, the mm-hmm. picture is that um, you know I, I'm sitting down having a conversation with you so the I'll start from the hands the hands of course I'm paying attention oh my god yeah <laughs> the hands symbolizing now that I'm looking by the way I just want to put it out there in the podcast sorry to interrupt you. I, like I'm, I'm looking at this photo now and yeah. you, if you guys don't know what I'm talking about ask Raji he will tell you what I'm talking about this guy looks like the modern Aristotle or Socrates, man. Now that you mentioned that you look like you're having a conversation with me, that's so <laughs> creepy. Yeah. As I'm staring, I feel like the picture is talking. But please yeah. go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah. So coming back to the hands, because I'm gonna go back from the hands into the entire, the, mm-hmm. the entire picture in itself, is that the hands? I'm paying attention and I'm listening to your story, and then the watch is there because you know, uh, you know making time for you that that's that's why i folded up my sleeves and sat down had that conversation and the table is of course that distance between uh me and the person and then the jacket of course you know you're in baguio oh, yeah. so <laughs> you're most likely <laughs> whether it's messing. yeah cool. when it's summer or winter or even inverted weathers or something you always have to wear jacket no, no matter where you are and then the hair i, I think the hair you? is that you know I'm letting my hair down because I'm listening to you. I'm paying full attention, and the face and the smile, of course, is. Uh, I love the conversation. I love the um, the the part that I'm listening and I'm uh, uh, digesting what you're saying, and you know, and it's basically that. That's the main gist uh-huh. of the entire profile picture and the entire structure of that uh, thing, and that's the philosophy. That. Yeah, the philosophy that I added into the picture few months after using. It as its its own branding itself, so that's like the main thing. So that's the story behind. So you kind that. of realized that after you posted yeah. it, then. Yeah. I love that, man. I mean, like, I, I'll I'll probably beg to differ when you say where your smile is like I'm interested and in shit. Because, like I said before, it looks kind of creepy. I don't know if it's just me, but 
I'm just saying, man. However, yeah. that doesn't mean that you're not awesome to talk to. That doesn't mean that we're not gonna have a philosophical, super cool conversation, right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that's just what I want to bring up with you. You know, let's let's have a conversation. Yeah. And one of the first things that I want to what I wanna bring up mm. in this conversation, since you brought up the past. Yeah. With your first question, I want to ask you a question about the passes. So you asked me, you were like, "Hey, you know what? Let's time travel for a little bit." I'm gonna ask Alex if we were in high school, how would I remember him, and yeah. all of that. So I'm gonna yeah. ask you if you could talk to anyone in the past, alive or dead, absolutely anyone, hmm. who would be and why. Ooh, that's interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Told you we would have clicked in high school, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That had me thinking. That had me thinking. Um, so many people I want to think, talk to. One is um, if we're looking at it in the musician standpoint, uh, I'd prefer. Lately, oh. I've been listening to Prince, you know, and uh, the multi-talented, multi-arranging kind of thing. Basically, I don't really want to have a conversation with him. I just want to. Uh, I just want to. Uh, it sounds creepy, but I just want to see him uh, uh, do do his thing. You know how to co- how he comes up and just watch him, just observe him uh, creating That's his music. Awesome. How he comes up with the music, and uh, you know how he da- how he sits in the studio. I mean, I, I wish I could sit down and uh, see how his thought process is. How he creates the music, and you know, we all know uh, Michael Jackson and Prince, uh, how they they come up with the music. But I, I, I'm Absolutely. earlier on, my earlier years, I used to listen to uh, Michael Jackson a lot. I was a big Michael Jackson fan, and um, lately, yeah, I, lately uh, somehow in some form, the algorithm of YouTube managed to get me hooked onto some Prince stuff, and. Um, You know, I studied nice. a bit of the Prince. I'm, I'm a huge funk fan, so I th- and I heard that I, at first my initial uh, initial reaction was to Prince was I thought Prince and Michael were the same guys, and then when I, I found out that Prince and Michael, oh, shit. Them, <laughs> yeah, because you know uh-huh. they they have that high falsetto kind of you know with the he he and then all that stuff, you yeah. know. Yeah, they got a similar vibe, man. Yeah, and the funny thing about that is they both they both grew up in the same year. So uh, yeah, it's um, it's an interesting oh, really? thing to uh, think about it, and uh, I think they were just few years apart. But but in in terms of who I really want to sit down between Prince and Michael Jackson, I'd prefer Prince because of his thought process, uh, how he thinks, how he creates the music. Because uh, when I was watching his documentary, there was this mm-hmm. uh, documentary that caught my eye when I found out that I think in the age of twenty five. Um, He uh, he caught the eye of some producer in Philadelphia, Philadelphia or uh, wherever he stayed, uh, Minneapolis. Uh, yeah, oh, sorry, Minneapolis. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. a, my 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 brain is a bit fried. Yeah, so in Minneapolis, and um, good, and uh, you know apparently when he was uh, doing his thing, uh, when he did his first album, apparently. Uh, He really, um, he really did the whole thing. He played the vocals, he played the bass, he played the drums, and and he did the mixing. The he knew what he wanted with all the stuff. And I think his first album, the Prince album, I think self-titled Prince album, a majority of the music that he did, he he worked on that, mm-hmm. and he, he he played, you know, he he played the instrument. And I think throughout the span of the years that he was evolving as a musician. You know, uh, he also had, uh, you know, the revolution. I think that was his first project yeah. band that he was also arranging for and writing songs for. Apparently, in revolution, you know, sure. he his work ethic really scared the shit out of his bandmates because, um, you know, as soon as he's finishing, you know, the jam session, the practice session, coming up with the music, he goes back home, mm-hmm. and then he works on his music, and then and then the next day he comes back. And then he presents, you know, this is the music that I want you guys to do, and you know all the so talented, yeah, you know, and uh, the work ethic is is kind of scary, and <laughs> I think there was a 
someone who mentioned a, a band member who mentioned does this guy even sleep because the he he basically <laughs> lives in the re- realm of music so i just want to observe uh, yeah it's a very long answered question but i really want to observe uh, prince yeah And like so, technically, you wouldn't even ask him anything. You just bask in his presence, man. Yeah, yeah. You just like be right there, right? And you know, yeah. I can totally resonate with you because I, once again, we would probably click mm. so well back in high school, bro. Because I totally resonate with you. You know who I would observe? Yeah. Had I if I was given the chance to go back in the past or. Uh, what have you, right? I would observe Chester Bennington of Lincoln Park <laughs> because that fucker saved my life when I was younger, man. I was this—I gotta tell you, I was this uh. character when I was a kid. Uh. I was this character, man. I was super introverted, socially awkward. No uh. one wanted to go near me, and I didn't want to go the fuck near to anyone either. So. Uh. I totally resonated with with Linkin Park songs, like obviously in the end, and and Crawly and all that. So you know, I I would also just want to be in this guy's presence. <laughs> I just want to see what it's like to be around this person. I just wanna I just wanna feel this guy's energy. Yeah. You know, the, I just wanna be able to shit man, just just absorb. The creativity, the the pain that he was going through to to be able to write these these songs, and also be able to appreciate it on a different level. I, I know a lot of people say, and I'm not sure if you've heard this. A lot of people will be like, if you're if you're sad, you'll understand the lyrics, and if you're happy, you'll obviously understand hmm. the melody. I'm not yeah. sure if melody is the right word. Hmm. I'm I'm, just, I'm paraphrasing here, hmm. but if you're like observing, you get to understand the person's why behind yeah. why the hell did they write this, man? I mean, some lyrics can be can be crazy. It wasn't. Have you heard of that song that that's banned in a few countries because it suggested suggested suicide to A lot of people. Which which one? Unchained. Which one? Oh, are there more than one? <laughs> I am not aware. But yeah, there, I don't know. There's there's just this song that was banned in a few countries because it suggested suicide to 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 a lot of people. And you you kind of just like wonder what the hell was this person going through? What the hell was this person thinking? Wait, I think I know that. And I, I have a feeling I know what you're talking about, but I'm not sure. Are you talking about Linkin I'm Park? I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, man. Is this Linkin Park no, or no, someone no, else? No, no, no. A different... A um, different yeah, I know what you're else. talking about. Someone else. beyond Linkin um, Park. Suicide Solution by Ozzy Osbourne. I, I know that. I know that story. <laughs> Is it? Is it suicide? Shalo- no, 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 I don't think so. Although you know that could be one of the things. Because But, nah, I don't think so. This just sang by a woman, sang by a woman. Really old song. It's about war, famine, and shit. You know, it's just crazy, and it it, it just drives my curiosity to be able to, you know, to try to fathom what this person was thinking what this person was going through in that situation to be able to to come up with a historical eternalizing piece of art like like that you know what does it take you know what I'm i mean wondering it's just crazy by the tip of my tongue the only thing that I'll i probably know send is... it to you after this podcast yeah. <laughs> the one that i know of if, uh The Suicide Solution by Ozzy Osbourne because that that gained notoriety. Apparently, after um, that that al- that song or that album re- was released, um, I think they took Ozzy mm-hmm. to court. I, I remember. I mean, they took <laughs> they took Ozzy to court a lot of times. <laughs> he pee- he peed on the Alamo yeah, yeah, when he was high, but this this song was much more he controversial. He ate a bat. He ate a bat, which he thought it was a prop. Um, um, 
uh, a dove. A dove's no, head. yo, yeah. I, I, I got it. I got it. I, so I'm sorry if you have a little bit of typing sounds while you while you were talking. I yeah. was researching it on on Google. It's Gloomy Sunday. Gloomy Sunday. Gloomy Sunday. Have you heard of that? I yeah, heard the of Hungarian that. suicide song. Gloomy Sunday, man. Oh my god, I'll, I'll send you the link later. Just don't commit suicide after, <laughs> obviously. But yeah, Gloomy Gloomy Sunday, man. That's that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, this song is so fucking emotional, man. It'll hit your heartstrings like like murder. Like you don't even like you don't even know. And and like what I was saying earlier, you know, you just get curious. Like, what was this person fucking thinking? What was this person going through? To be able to write this down, let alone turn into turn into music that people might appreciate. Yeah. And yeah, man, I just found that to to some extent, I just found that profound. Interesting. Now that you're talking about music, <laughs> I just found that I just find that completely profound, man. You know how you know how certain certain products, certain like like pieces of art mm. or books. Where they immediately their price immediately rises after after like after the author of the book or the artist of the particular piece of art passes away. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah, I mean, like uh... it's, it's. I mean, I mean, you know, it's probably because of the scarcity. No one is ever gonna make this piece of art or this type of music again. But that also goes to show. Like man, why didn't we appreciate the dude while, or the the woman while the artist while while they were here? Speaking you know? of dead celebrities, I think the one that I know the most that uh, is relevant to the previous conversation with Michael Jackson. You know, uh, Michael Jackson's. Um, you know, when he died, he was the highest grossing dead celebrity, and I think the till this day, some people are still tuning in. Isn't his he still album. is? Yeah. He is. I think he's higher than I'm Elvis Presley. I'm still tuning in this fucking album. <laughs> yeah, man. I still do my Michael Jackson from time to time. <laughs> Favorite Michael Jackson song ever. Me mm. first, yo. Uh, yeah. Man in the Mirror. That's the song that resonates. Oh my god. Wait, are we doing man top three, top five? The mirror. <laughs> top one, man. Top one. Okay, the, okay. The only one. Man in the yeah. Mirror. Man, shit. I, I. That's mine. That's mine. Man in the mirror. That's um, my, my, oh that's my your God. top one. When I, I have the man like... in the mirror, yeah. It, <laughs> yeah. For me, I've no. Been, go ahead, go ahead. I, I mean, swam. if you got a top three, uh, for me, I like I have top five because oh, uh, my entire uh-huh. my entire life, I mean, half of it was spent on diving into the discography, uh, discounting of of course the Jackson Five album because I was not really much a fan of the childhood stuff that he did. Uh, from off the wall till uh, till invincible, I, the Mike. I I think I still have the Michael album, but I was not really satisfied with the production. But from uh, off the wall till invincible, mm. I mean, every day I've been tuning in from off the wall all these albums. I've been binging them all these albums throughout the entire. And then um, I kind of mm. have my my list there is like top five. Um, I'll go from my fifth one, which is of course "You Rock My World," you yeah, know, with Chris Tucker. <laughs> oh yeah, hell and, yeah! Uh, <laughs> I love that album because it's. They say it's the underrated album is because, uh, of course, there was a lot of inside outside politics and all that uh, whatnot. So um, hmm. it was really uh, shitty, but uh, the the marketing also of it was very bad, and uh, you know, it never really gained much except, of course, for the song "You Rock My World." And I think he only performed that once right. uh, during his Madison Square Garden uh, thing. What and did then, once? yeah, he did that once. Uh, and then my fourth one is uh, Smooth Criminal. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, hell yeah. I, I sometimes especially I especially the make one them. that Alien Ant Farm covered. Yeah, I never really kind of had uh, digged it because it was too. Uh, I'm not me- really a fan of the speed stuff. Although yeah, I, I listened to Linkin Park. There's a funny story there that I, I'm gonna get back into that. Um, so uh, smooth criminal. For sure. Um, uh, uh, 
tr- thriller is there is uh, Billy Jean of course Billy Jean is, is thriller, there yeah yeah sure. the Billy Jean um and then um my my second one is uh uh This whatever happens. This is one uh, with uh, Carlos Santana. It's it's rare. Uh, it's rare that I'm I'm putting out a rare album, a uh, rare piece of music that is uh, saying that. That's one of my favorite uh, collaborations with Carlos Santana because you know MJ and Carlos Santana. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is from the Invincible album as well. That's the shit. <laughs> yeah, and my number one of all from all of it is Dangerous because. Uh, Dangerous, dangerous. Is like, oh my god! Dangerous. There's like the the one thing I love about it is the storytelling. I mean, that's the only song that has, you know, that storytelling. It, it, it's similar to Smooth Criminal, but it has a build up and it has that storytelling that uh, gets you. And uh, I think I remember performing that dance somewhere in in my childhood. Somewhere I don't remember exactly. You where performed it was. that dance. You perform that dance. Yeah, oh it's, my it's God. It, We got to talk somewhere. about that at another podcast episode. <laughs> yeah, it's somewhere there. <laughs> you got to show me that. <laughs> uh, there's a link my my uncle. It's on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> there was a time where uh, oh, shit. Uh, I really wanted to uh, you know, I really wanted to get into that field and my uncle said, "You know, uh, I'll take a video of you, you know, you get your whole thing, you get the hat and all that stuff." And um, I think that was the last time I wore a hat uh, as well because uh, <laughs> the funny part about that was, uh, yeah, it was impromptu, and I was still hungover over the fact that um, I really loved that uh, the, the stuff that he did, and um, I kind of at that time I memorized. Well, now with with the muscle memory that I have, I kind of forgotten almost all the moves that he played during. Uh, The 1998, where I think that was the first time MTV. I think that's where he performed, mm-hmm. you know, Dangerous. So I memorized the entire, you know, the the entire shenanigans, except of course for the opening with a lot of the back backup dances. I kind of memorized it at that time, and I said, my uncle said, let's let's make it happen. And then it's somewhere in YouTube, uh, <laughs> I had a hater. It was funny. Mm-hmm. This is the funny part of it. I had a hater. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, and uh, yeah, that that was really fun. <laughs> Can't believe I'm talking about that. <laughs> so, All good, yeah. man. All good. Hey, hey, I got a question for you though hmm. that just 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 came into my mind since we're talking about dead artists. You hmm. ever heard of the? You ever heard of the white lighter myth or the Twenty Seven Club? Twenty Seven Club, yeah, but you the white lighter one, I haven't. I haven't heard that one. So yeah, I mean, in the 27 Club, they all passed away or died with a white lighter somewhere in their person. Mm. And that I'm, I want to come up with a particularly interesting question that we both can answer here. Mm. If we were musicians, mm. hungry fucking musicians, yeah. trying to take it out there, uh. would you sell your soul to the devil to become famous? With the given circumstances, good this, question, man. this is a, this is a good question, man. I, I swear, it is actually a good question. Never had me thinking. It, in mm-hmm. a sense, yeah, Keep I'm thinking, man. Think yeah, I it. am thinking. I'm thinking about it. You never it. know, yo. That might be listening <laughs> Because... to you right now. Be careful what you say. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing is, if I answer that question, I'm looking at two possible, uh, possible hate messages that I'll be getting. But it, it doesn't really matter much. Oh, whatever, because, man. Yeah. <laughs> in a way, granted by the circumstance, I'll 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 put it in a context that will make it more more sensible. Because if I answer it out of context, it won't really mean much. It won't have that value. Mm-hmm. Uh, in in a sense, right. if um, if I was uh, if I believe that I was ba- a bad musician in some form or the other, which. Uh, I cannot come up with my own, you know. I have the writer's block, or you know, the musician block, or whatever block they have that uh, people go through. Mm-hmm. You know, I definitely, definitely make it, make that happen. Get that deal and sign the. You mean sell your soul to the devil? Yeah. If if that was my circumstances, <laughs> you know, if if uh-huh. if uh, yeah. 
if I really love it to the point that I'm willing to die for it, then I'm 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 gonna go for it. But uh, that that's the context. But since I have like uh, I grew up with a musician family, and I I have a little bit of opening, so I don't think that's gonna happen anytime soon. <laughs> Yeah, it's all good. If you were to ask me, yeah, a guy that would be, I'm so I'm gonna answer like you did. I'm gonna answer in two two contexts. If yeah. you were to ask me if I was a lot, I'm 31 years old now. If you were to ask me when I was like fucking 23, 25, 26 around that age, I'd say hell yeah. Where's he at? Let me sign that shit. Do I gotta <laughs> cut myself a? you know, give you the blood and all of that shit, right? Yeah. But now, now I'm 31 years old and you ask me, I'm a, I'm a guy who's got a vision, who yeah. knows what he wants, who's, who's really living out his purpose day by day. Mm. And the obvious answer would be no. no. <laughs> and how I'm going to process that, I, th- I think, I think... I think most people, I think the way people, especially musicians, and I'm not trying to speak like I'm a fucking expert. <laughs> it's <laughs> just because it's the topic. Yeah. But based on the context, like especially with musicians, I think that they want to go for fame so bad mm. and so fast mm. that they do anything, literally anything to get there without thought of the consequences and if you're younger perhaps you know that might be that might be a lot easier to think about that might be a lot easier to make a decision on mm. but once again as you get older like I did mm. I'm like you know who fucking cares about fame <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean like yeah. I don't care if you know me I don't care if you don't know me I'm just gonna do me yeah and I'm not even a musician either. I'm a motivational goddamn speaker. You know, if you don't know me, that's about me. Though. You're about to know me. I guarantee you that. But I wouldn't go so far as to hasten the process where the consequences are just fucking beyond the grave, man. It's just <laughs> crazy that way, you know? Yeah. Kind of get it. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I, I scared, I'm sure I, I scared the shit out of your response. <laughs> it's, although it's not a competition, I know, but I, I had a feeling I scared the shit out of your response. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> but hey, but, man, you know, yeah. to each his own, yeah. each her own, everything that we go through is very, so to speak, subjective. Mm. And... What, how I feel about, you know, going going into another topic, how I feel about what people go through, what I go through, especially during these life-changing times, man. Mm. I feel it's all about choosing your discomfort. Mm. Three words. Choosing your discomfort. What do I mean by that, if, if I can expound? So, you could choose... To not want to succeed in life, you can choose to just take a chill pill, a few chill pills every goddamn day, mm. and just relax. You can choose to, you know, make failure your identity. Mm. And that's uncomfortable. You mm. know what's equally, un- equally uncomfortable? Success, man. Mm. Choosing success working towards success, wanting to be successful, changing the way you think, changing the way you look, transforming who you are mm. is what I believe is equally un- is equally as uncomfortable as failure. So this entire thing that's going on 2020 pandemic, Beirut explosion, death of Chad Kobe, RBG wildfires, typhoons, and all the bullshit that's been going on. Mm. I think, and many people might hate me for this shit, but at the end of the day, I think we've all got a choice. Mm. We could either choose to be uncomfortable in whatever it is that's going on, 
or choose to be uncomfortable as well, but making progress. Hence, choose your effort. But that's just me, man. What, what are your thoughts? That's 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 interesting. For me, philo- <laughs> I, I never expected that we'd go that deep. <laughs> uh, All right, but- you don't know me very well, dude. <laughs> Yeah, I, I um, wow, that, that for me, from in, in contrast to what I've done so far, you know, um, my my words of for, for the pandemic and uh, the madness that has happened through the pandemic, um, build it, and if it's messy in the beginning, it's usual uh, that's normal, but if if you stay consistent, you know keep pushing keep pushing you know you you got to you you'd get there you know you get there eventually you may not see the results yeah that that's the challenge of all you know you may never mm-hmm. get that result that you expect but um you know uh the best part of it is you know enjoy the journey first of all and um if if you make something sure. out of it that is worth something that is that will suffice your legacy and then go for it i mean Everyone has a different definition of legacies, and uh, I, I, I actually am an advocate of legacy because um, I, I, I always think of it that that's one of my main obsessions. Um, and uh, although, yeah, there's no clear definition to where my structure of where uh, legacy, my legacy is gonna go through. The, the end result is building a bridge that would connect one person to the other, and. Um, uh, in, in these conversations with with the folks that I've had the conversation with, it, which I had the pleasure of recording and having conversation with, I've enjoyed the the fact that if someone out there is tuning in, I'm not really into that demographic thing. If someone comes in and then says, "Hey, uh, this story changed my mind. That story changed my mind. This conversation changed my mind," you know, then yeah, I, I'm satisfied enough to have done my job as a not just as a podcaster, as a as a human being, that's that's the main thing. I hope I answered the question, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, I fucking love that, man. I mean, choosing your discomfort has everything to do with 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 human, hmm. you know, because not all the time you can choose the discomfort that's particularly right for you. Hmm. You know, most of the time you might choose failure over over success. Yeah, and obviously that's not that's not right for you. Hmm. But you're just human, man, and we're and I'm kind of paraphrasing this, but I, there's a quote floating around in social media, hmm. and it goes something like, "We're all just walking each other home. We're hmm. all just walking each other home." And you know, whatever it is that you might be feeling during this life-changing year. Whatever it is you might be going through, I guarantee you, we're all going through it together. We're all go. We're we're all in the same boat. You know, we're, just because we're on this podcast right now doesn't mean that we don't level with the audience. Hmm. We're going through crazy shit too. You know, we're just really choosing. A lot of people don't understand or can fathom that a lot of important things they can actually choose especially their their discomfort mm. so yeah man that's just you know that's that's just where I'm that's just where I'm pretty much coming from with that interesting you know that's pretty interesting but let me for sure man uh, let me let me ask you let me ask you though mm. what's uh What's your, let's talk about, so you mentioned 2020 being a little bit, being a little bit heavy, being a little bit of a burden for everyone. We Hmm. mentioned it rather, right? Hmm. So let's get human. Let's get authentic. Let's get real a little bit. Is that okay with you? Sure. sure. Uh, What's your, what's like, what's your like biggest struggle for 2020? What's your biggest struggle, man? I'm not even going to ask you how you dealt with it. Yeah. I just want to know what it was. That's it. Oh, I love to answer that question. I, I, nobody has asked me that question, or um, I've done a variation of that answer. Uh, before I answer that question, though, uh, we're just gonna have a short break, folks, and then we'll come back, and then I'll you know, return with my answer. <laughs> Hope you don't mind. Yeah. 
This is Mike and Ham from Please Pause. Meron kaming munting podcast where we talk about all things TV and film. And despite that, surprisingly, we are still married. Control freak ka kasi sa podcast na to. 30 seconds lang po ang meron tayo. <laughs> Pakibilisan. From blockbusters to classics, superheroes to love teams, hit series to teleseries, join us as we have meaningful and meaningless conversations on the stuff we watch. Someday, mababago ka rin ang taglay na yan. Check out Please Pause on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and other major podcast platforms. See you there! Hey folks, welcome back to the Rajiv Show. We had an interesting ad break. During the ad break, <laughs> both of Very us completely forgot. <laughs> yeah, both of us forgot what the question on the first half was. So it was really. What are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, that was that was actually above <laughs> our heads. Yeah, we should have actually wrote it down before we sing. Anyway, moving on, moving on. Um. Uh. Hey, you got any questions that you want to add on in order to replace the last question? <laughs> yeah, actually I do. Hmm. What do you think about first impressions versus second chances? Uh, in what What's context more is this? What's important to other people? I love this question, but I, I want You know to how they context. say first impressions are You know how they say first impressions are everything and shit? Yeah. Right? But then second chances at the same time make the world go round. <laughs> I'm that, not sure that's... if you've ever heard of that. First impressions may be everything, but second chances make the world go round. It's more important to you. First impressions or second chances? Are you giving it the general meaning of it? Because if it's specified, um, uh, if it's specified to let's say relationship wise or anything like that, then um, there's a different answer to that. But if you're talking about the general consensus of that question which which one are you specifying on this in this context the of the general question one. the, uh, the general, general one about the first, general first impressions yep. versus uh, second chances um i'm not really a first impression kind of guy uh I, in, in my experience uh, first impressions never really work well unless um for me it's all about the vibe you know and um I'm not a first impression, so I think I'll go with the latter, which is uh, second chances. Because you know, um, second chances are really worth it. I, I mean, in the humanistic sense, like in in correlation to the conversation that we had, uh, which I forgot, mm-hmm. there was yeah. a second chance there where we recuperated. <laughs> we forgot. <laughs> yeah, we both forgot, so we recuperated it. Uh, we we kind of came up with another way of. Uh, rein- reinventing the question or reinventing the wheel, as they say. So there's always a second chance, and um, I always I'm a I'm a f- advocate for a second chance because uh, you know you miss out something. It is always taken out of context, and and I'm not that uh, kind of person who judges you from toe to head. You know, uh, and that's not my style. Basically, uh, when it comes to uh, having a conversation, mm-hmm. having the first. <laughs> uh, The beginning when you say hi to me that is like the context in that context uh, you know it's that is where the loyalty begins for me that's uh, one thing i haven't shared to anyone is that when someone that. says hi to me there's an immediate investment of loyalty that you already gained from that hello itself you know you don't need to even say anything as i need your loyalty and all that bullshit it's it's all about you know The moment you say hi, I'm already loyal to you, and that's where in the conversation. It depends on how the conversation goes, of course. But putting that aside, it's all about you know having that vibe, having the thing to work, and making things work. That's the thing. That's the answer to that question. Totally, I totally resonate with that, man. For me, I agree when you say second chances are. Perhaps more important than first impressions. I because my life is full of second chances, man. And second chances to me, what it means to me rather, it means re reinventing myself. Hmm. And you have no idea how much I have reinvented myself over the past years. Hmm. But what I can tell you is that the last reinvent reinvention. Is my favorite, my favorite person, because I I love who I am now, man. I 
I love what I'm capable of doing. I love who I am to to other people. And what most people might think is that they might be stuck in a certain identity. They might be stuck in a certain in a box even where if someone tells you this or if someone tells you that, you got to be that person. And the answer is you don't. I mean, it's just extremely difficult to, you know, go against that flow. I'm mm. not going to say it's easy because I went against it. Mm. Because a lot of people tried to try to define who I was and I felt like I was defined by other people as well. But once I learned that I had to give that second chance to myself mm. and I don't think a lot of people that as well I think a lot of people think that second chances are external should be given to other people and all that shit mm. for me it's 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 just an inward thing for me second chances are that's all about me I'll take that I'll take that second chance over a first impression any day Because once again, first impressions may be everything, but second chances make the world go round. First impressions that people get of me, a few things, man. Number one, I look like a vocalist. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because of the tattoos. Yeah. Number two, I look like a rock star. Probably because of the tattoos. Number three, look like I'm an arrogant prick. That I have not yet determined for the for the main reason that because there are a lot of reasons for it and I can't choose just one mm. but I guarantee you once you get to know me after even even after just a few minutes remember yeah. when we talked before this yeah that was the first impression and here's the second chance man yeah. so what is it now right yeah you know what I mean so Here we are recording something you that's know? me <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Recording something thing. about from from music yeah. to the twenty to the lighter the white lighter club and all of that to to yeah. um freaking gloomy Sunday and now to first impressions and second impressions. I love this podcast. <laughs> the funny thing was I I did not know you were you you were comparing apples to apples. The first impression of me. Of what I know of from the data that I've collected over the period of time, is that um, mm -hmm. uh, the long hair is a dead giveaway. Um, in India, is most likely I'm mistaken for a female, but here it's more like yeah, rock star kind of. Are you for real? Yeah, that yeah, that that's a funny story actually. Um, there there were many many a times, and um, uh, yeah when. When I met people, I spoke in English, and of course, by now, I, I I'd admit it to you, and I, I think I've admitted this to everybody that I've spoken to, is that, you know, I'd be a, a zillionaire by now, by how many times I've heard na no nosebleed ako on the first time I have a conversation with someone in the diplomatic sense of just trying to get to know them, you know, I'd be a bloody yep. zillionaire heck hectally or whatever whatever near whatever millionaire goes up you know whatever <laughs> word that goes up uh -huh. I'd be that <laughs> by the times how many times I've heard many people say you know my nose is bleeding because you're speaking too much English you know and yeah that's why I kind of okay you go away then yeah in, in the back of my head you know and uh, yeah that uh, <laughs> that is how uh, th those are the first you can't impressions. please everybody man Yeah, I mean that's not really the intention. See, um, for me, uh, uh, this is a transition. I, I've mentioned this before. I've mentioned this a lot of times in in mm -hmm. almost every conversation that I've had. Is that um, that when when I meet people, I want to know them for who they are, and you know, it it never really is all about you know what Gucci belt this bugger is wearing, what. You know, hairstyle, this bugger is wearing whatever that stuff. You know, you're good, you, you, you're right, good. Right. You know, uh -huh. and um, all that stuff. I I don't really care. You know, you you have the ability to communicate and you have the ability to express yourself. Then fine. You know, that is you know that is in itself my respect. You know, I got I I I know what you you say. You know what you want to say. 
but then with this all this attitude and all this bullshit that is uh, surrounding that that entire vibe is it like a dead you know f- you know yeah <laughs> it's it's dead it, it's just like i yeah, I, i get you know, man i get yeah you. It's just a dead thing, and you know? I don't really like it. It's it's de- de- depressing to the point that I don't really want to associate myself with a lot of people actually. And um, I've been hated for it because one was on the other hand, people say that I'm I'm too good to be something, and then when they find out that you know I'm just as human as everybody else, you know, it's, it's like that. You know, it's <laughs> it's it's very exactly weirdly paradoxically twisted in its own sense <laughs> and i hated it so yeah Can't i had be. no choice Can't be. <laughs> yeah i i had no choice but to smallen my circle it's not even a circle it's just a small dot basically <laughs> and that's you know all, all the people is like an atom thing so yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's how my reality is and that's I how love life that. all the people are an atom thing Yeah. I love that man. All the people are an atom thing, and you just got this small dot. Yeah, and you know, and yeah, for it, some reason, that yeah. might be the most important thing ever. In a way, it's just that it's so many stories that I could share, and it go on into saying. But then again, a lot of people will criticize me. No, no, no. He said this. He said that. Said it out of context. Believe me. I mean. The main intention was just to communicate and understand one another. Is my main intention. In, in most cases, it's not really all. In in most cases, it's just the end is like I just want to get to know the person, have a conversation with the person. But the person takes it in the wronger content. And don't even get me started with the online shit because that is even worse than hell. <laughs> uh-huh. That uh, I, that that uh, I I've mentioned this in one conversation. It's like. Um, The, the context of having a co- communication with someone is the online is uh, it's it's tough. It's like you know, uh, <laughs> it's it's tough because you you are not having the f- in face to face conversation. Believe me, if you and I had a face to face conversation, exactly. we'd be probably shouting over our It'd lungs. It'd be awesome as hell. You know, we'd be shout- Yeah, we'd be having exactly. conversation, but we'd be shouting. Over- but we still have that you know constant that uh, that. That relation between that that the, the words, the exchange of words, and exchange of ideas, but in online, mm-hmm. the, the the thing I hated the most is you know you have some idea that you want to say, and you put it in a contextual form, in, in a textual form, and then someone reads it as though you they think that you're arrogant because there is that you know you have that white barrier between you and the and who you're communicating with, which is really. Fucked up, <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's uh, that's true. It, it, it's that's really so hard. true. You know, it's like, especially like even for the simple things, like you know, uh, I'm sure there are some certain moments like for those who are tuning in, you know, they have they have girlfriends saying, "Hey, hey, dude, you know, or hey, yeah, hey, whatever your name is, you know, <laughs> where do you want to eat?" And then let's, mm-hmm. let's just go to the thing. So, mm-hmm. and then someone will the the. The, the con- conversation will get controversial in the sense that, are you arrogant with me? You know, it's because of the miscontent. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, that I, miscommunication. Yeah, man. I mean, I think that's a, that causes a lot of problems for yeah. for everybody. And one one thing made it worse is with the evolution of texting came in the content of. Caps lock and numbs lock and all these other stuff. When you're caps lock, you're apparently angry. When emojis, it's bold. <laughs> yeah, emojis yeah. is fine. At least emojis. Uh, one thing I like about emojis is the fact that you can say what you feel in that content of that thing. But if you are in in a mid range between happiness and sadness, you can't find that fucking thing anywhere <laughs> in Messenger. <laughs> exactly. There are no emojis for what we feel sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But in, in but for me the the part that I hate the most take emojis out of the equation, contextual conversation, just even regular conversation. What do you want to have for dinner? Uh, when are you planning mm-hmm. to go to bed? Uh, when are, are we going going out today? You know all these you know daily stuff that we have. Uh, although yeah, 
it kind of gets it gets it in the wrong content it's like are you asking me out uh, what's this? you know it's like wait what what <laughs> and then you have to back read the whole damn thing to see if you actually texted Barack Obama by accident it's like shit what the hell <laughs> yeah man you know what I say man I totally get you though totally get you though I, I always have said before is that communication is easy getting your message across is difficult Mm. So once again, communication is easy. Getting your message across is difficult. So it's like you can talk, 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 talk communicate, mm. communicate, communicate. But if that person doesn't vibe with you, if that person doesn't understand you, and if he, obviously if you're not understanding that person, yeah. then there's nothing, man. Like, like right now, we've been we've been what? We've been recording for an hour thirty minutes. We could probably talk the whole night, man. Because yeah. <laughs> we understand each other, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I I do agree, man. That's that's very 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 crazy. It's crazy, right? <laughs> that's why in, in in context, because I had a conversation about relationship. That is the main gist of where I I'm coming from from that conversation is because of that, you know. Especially in in a pandemic where you really mm-hmm. wanna just you just wanna have someone to talk to, you know, and um, and, and you know you yeah. in the online. I, I I I'm saying this twice already in a <laughs> in a conversation where you have you so you good. like someone, you know, you like someone over a whatever site you guys find your your matches from, and then you know everything starts off with the hello, which is good. That is like the baseline of it. Some people fuck up that part. I'll admit it. I'd raise my hand because I sometimes fuck up that part. But the remaining content... <laughs> Same here. <laughs> yeah. The remaining content of what is salvageable from what you fucked up is, interestingly enough, the best way to ev- evolve your relationship. If it doesn't go anywhere, you know, you you got to throw the conversation into the bin. And that's normally one of the hardest things, though, even though you know the, you've, you've already com- communicated, you built something, you know. Because you expect too much. Yeah. It's, it's not in that context. It's not in that context. In, in, in that context, not just that. It, for me, in my sense, uh, I don't take it that way. That, that's not my side of mm. it. In, in my side of it is how I see it is because... Uh, You've you've started something, you know. You st- the one thing is you, you yeah. know when you're building a house, you can't really build the entire house in one day. You know, you you, you build it up, build the foundation, true, and then Rome you, you add the, built in a day. The, you know, you you add the you know the the walls and the roof and all that stuff, and mm-hmm. uh, so the fact that you've invested your time, you know, in a daily schedule. Let's say in a daily schedule, you're creating so many things, and then you have this time where you you, you 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 work and then you have this time to spend okay you're free and you're talking to this person and apparently the person is free and you're building something which is good and then on the other hand the car if, if, if it's be behind a white screen it's worse because if you if you're saying something that that person doesn't receive and then she, she or she is also doing the same thing you know there's no communication mm-hmm. and then you're cutting it off from there that's well and good but at least that foundation sometimes is getting sentimental it's sometimes it has that under underlying value because you've taken the hour off of your busy uh, life to you know create that you know create your thing so yeah but, that but that's just my perspective yeah. that, 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 taking that, time yeah. for that yeah but that's my uh, uh, that's my perspective into that because I, I spent the time talking to you I, I respect that if, if I were to cut off with you, it's going to be hurtful. I never met you. I've never held you. I never, you know, bought you coffee. I never, but the, the investment is there. And, you know, when you love something, you know, is, is, uh, when you love a conversation, you love a commodity or something, you know, you, you still taking that bandage off is the toughest part. But anyway, I digressed into the I agree. <laughs> depth of my mind over there. <laughs> Yeah, man. We we went in deep. We went in deep with Dora's Vami with that. That was deep. That was super cool, though. I mean, I, I I was I was I was very much entertained as much as our listeners are right now with, with how you really delve into detail with that. I don't think hmm. that's something that you actually talk about a lot. Is yeah. it? I mean, you really my went all out, man. 
<laughs> the funny part of it all is has it has it been in your mind? It's it's been in my mind because prior to the recording of this episode is that I I've been at home for almost a month and I think uh, I managed to go outside the house and look like Darth Vader in Baguio because everybody's having that cosplay thing already. Everybody's uh, following the trend uh, to protect themselves, which is in a good way. And um, yeah, I mean, from time to time, uh, at least I got to go out, stretch my legs and, you know, uh, have a feel of what, what the city looks like because I haven't seen sunshine in almost a month prior to the time that I went back to the city. It was like, shit. Yeah, man. <laughs> Gotta be careful with that. Gotta yeah. be careful. I, I think going back to what I was saying before, it's also about choosing your discomfort. Yeah. There's a, there, I think, you know, I, although I don't suggest or absolutely do not promote going outside, mm. there is a safe way mm. to go outside, especially if you just want to receive sunlight. Yeah. Especially for your mental well-being. Yeah. For me, most of the times that I work prior to all the things that I've been doing uh, and all the recordings and all the stuff that I've been editing and all the work, I mean, I love it. I, I'm not saying that I'm shitting on this parade, but uh, this is the thing that's keeping me alive. But this is not enough. This is not the uh, the recording, the editing. I love it. I'm, I'm not saying that I hated it. I, I'm not. Mm. If I hated it, I would have closed down Rajiv's show 10 years ago or even in the beginning yeah. of the entire thing. I would have exactly. given up after season three. But I love it. I love it. But it's not the source of fuel that keeps me going. And, you know, because one is prior to the end of the pandemic, uh, if people are revisiting this episode prior to the pandemic, there's more to life. You're going out. Eventually, I'll be meeting... Mr. Pedron, somewhere in Baguio City, once this whole pandemic is done, everybody's vaccinated, everybody's strong. Hell everybody yeah, man. is sure. Everybody is the flipping carts and doing <laughs> cartwheels all over Session Road and all that stuff. Everybody's doing that. I, I, that those are the things mm-hmm. that I want to. So I, I need to have enough more fuel. And, you know, that that's the thing that I, I live for as well, not just the, the podcast. And, and the fact that I'm evolving the podcast into bigger thing. Uh, it's not an arrogant thing. Is is that the dream gets wider and wider as I I have a conversation. Prior to this conversation, you may never know. Rajiv show might have a lot of listeners, and I'm not bragging, but th- that that to me is like uh, something good, something that's made me. We'll never know, man. And yeah. you know, don't, don't like don't like humble yourself too much. When you're like, I don't mean to be bragging. I don't mean to be arrogant. You got a vision, man. You got a fucking vision. And some people might be insecure about that because they don't have a vision. Some people might be insecure about that because they might be jealous of you. Some people might be insecure about that because they can't look forward to things the way you look forward to things. Don't ever downplay your vision. If you, if, you know, if you want to have more listeners in the future... If you want to go, if you want to reach, you know, even more people around the globe hmm. in the future, by all means, don't downplay that shit, man. Be, able, be proud of that. That's what yeah. people want to hear. Exactly. Own it. Take accountability for it. Yeah. Your mission, your vision, it's huge. And the more you dampen it, the more you downplay it just so you can fit everyone else's box or just so people specifically people who are particularly negative won't say shit and you won't say shitty things about you hmm. then are you doing this for them or are you doing this for you exactly that's that's a very good you know? point yeah exactly yeah. Yeah. anyway wow you, man. <laughs> it's it been a you. powerful powerful yeah. uh, thing. <laughs> conversation Hopefully in the next season, I, I this is an open invitation to you, pal. All, you're always welcome to come back to the Rajiv show. Let, let's make a season where we, we just talk about shit or something, you know. <laughs> I don't know. It's an open invitation to you. I, I really love you. to have you. I really you're love welcome, to have you. You're oh, welcome to message me anytime. You know what? I, I came I just came up with an idea that, yeah. that might have less work for us, mm. especially for you, <laughs> since this is your show. Let's go on live streams, man. Sure, sure. Let's have the convert. Let's extend the conversation to other people. Whoever wants to join in, all right. 
especially when you find your niche and you find your target market they want to talk philosophy let's talk fucking philosophy man all right I, then i, I have a finally series. make your dream come true of the series. round table thing that you've always wanted to do man <laughs> and yeah live series there you go oh shit. i actually have there it you go man <laughs> Live series. You have it? Yeah. Why didn't you invite me to that? I'm talking on that next. I'm talking on that next, man. <laughs> sure, sure. Anyway, I'm sure our listeners are already exhausted because they've already, you know, uh, enjoyed a lot of the conversations that we had. Um, to wrap this conversation off, this is not the last of our conversations. There are more conversations to come. To, to wrap this Absolutely. this this portion of the conversation, I'm sure our listeners, uh, your your listeners, my listeners, would love to connect with you via social media. How do they find you on social media, pal? Yeah, all you need to do is go on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn, even, and you can search for Alex Pedrone. A L E X. My last name is spelled as P E D R O N. My at is at A E J R Pedrone. Especially if you want to have powerful, philosophical conversations like this. Raji and I are here for you. Thank you, Raji, for having me. Cheers, cheers. And for those who are tuning in, I'm sure you guys picked up a lot, as mentioned earlier. I want to thank my legendary guest right now, Alex Pedron. I finally pronounced his last name right. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, good, man. yeah, I want to thank my guest again for the conversation and, of course, future collaborations. We're going to do a lot of good stuff. We're gonna, There's a lot of good stuff. Prior to this episode, I'm sure we've already done a lot of things, but, you know, you may never know. You know, there's a lot that we, we still get to accomplish. So I want to thank my guest again. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. Thank you to my host, Raji. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to our listeners. <laughs> and for our listeners out there, uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Cheers. I will see you in the next episode.